it was not a straight shot. It was one of those situations where when I first went to work at Wyatt Labs right out of grad school, I went to work in what was called product evaluation and stability. Well, there were a lot of interactions with the regulatory team then, but from there I actually moved into clinical writing and then into pharmacovigilance. And in all of these different sections within the organization, I found that I was interacting with the regulatory folks. And what I really enjoyed about regulatory and their approach was that they saw the big picture. They were able to put together lots of bits and pieces of information into the kinds of responses they might have to give to regulatory agencies or putting together the filings and the submissions. And eventually I migrated into the regulatory arena but it was because of my exposure to all of these other activities that I did within the companies that gave me the ability to talk across all of these different areas to the people in regulatory and then eventually with the regulators themselves. One of the great things about regulatory is, is what I would make the distinction between breadth of knowledge and depth of knowledge. And especially in pharmaceutical companies, there are specialists, people who really understand their particular area in great, great depth. What I found is that my colleagues in regulatory, myself, ended up being a little bit more generalist. Our breadth of knowledge was very big, so we could talk to people in product development, in pilot plans, people in production, in stability, throughout the whole gamut, and even post-authorization. And there weren't that many people within the organization that had that broad scope of ability to speak and to, to think about the, the broader aspects of getting a product to market, keeping it on market, and not from the marketing standpoint, although we did have lots of interactions there, but from the standpoint of the regulatory point of view. Well, I think the regulatory profession itself is really important because it sets the standards for the quality of the kinds of people who get into the profession. So having an organization like RAPS that helps with providing professional support, providing a community for regulatory professionals is really important because the regulatory professional often becomes the glue within an organization. Even the smallest of organizations turn to their regulatory team for advice, for counsel, for ideas about way forward, even very early on in product development. So having an organization like RAPS supporting the entire profession, I think is really critical to continue with the high level professionalism of regulatory. I was introduced through colleagues in the industry who had participated in RAPS activities. And when I first joined RAPS, I wasn't quite sure how it would help me. But what I learned pretty quickly was that it was a community. And because it was a community, I was able to network and learn from others. And that's when I found out about the RAC. Now, I was about 10 years into my career when I sat for the RAC. It was challenging, there's no doubt about it, but it was very, very rewarding to be able to pass the RAC examination and to use that as part of the background that I have and to explain to people that an RAC is actually a very good qualification that gives a, a particular standing to those who have gone through the process, those who have shown that they have a particular knowledge base. So now I'm semi-retired <laughs> and uh, when I look back on how RAPS has played a role in my career, it's done two things. One is that it's provided me with a community to interact with, which is so important because you're always looking for a mentor. Even now, I look for mentors to help me answer questions, give me guidance. And the other aspect was the educational component of what RAPS provides. I could always go to RAPS to take a course, to interact at the chapter level, go to a webinar. The new technologies have made it so much easier for me to access knowledge bases in Perhaps. And so those two things, community and training and knowledge, are really the, the core of what has kept me involved in RAPS.
There are a lot of organizations that a person can join nowadays, professional organizations of all sorts. But what I really like about RAPS is that it is a tight-knit community. Often we'll meet and say, what a small world that you are here or I'm at a particular event with you. And that represents a way of us building on each other's experiences and learning from each other. So I would encourage people to continue to participate in RAPS activities and to join if you're not a member because it's a great place to meet people and to build a real community.